Well, good evening. My name is Amy Gaskill, and I'm the Outreach Coordinator for the FUSRAT program for the Buffalo District. I thank you all for being here tonight, uh, making time in your day to join us and hear more about the Seaway FUSRAT program and uh, the engineered cap, uh, and we're talking about the pre-remediation work that we're gonna be doing right now. Okay, and uh, I wanna introduce you, uh, first of all, to Lieutenant Colonel Milliman. He's our district commander. Uh, he is a West Point grad in 2006, and I have to say that because I think it's awesome. Anyway, and uh, during his career, he earned his professional engineer license and project management professional certificate. Um, he is a Western New York native, so he knows this area really well. And um, he is now our district commander, and I welcome him to the podium, sir. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Amy. Appreciate that. Uh, it was more than we needed, but thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, as Amy stated, my name is uh, Lieutenant Colonel Lyle Millman, and I'm the district commander here for Buffalo. I want to take a moment this evening to welcome everyone and say thank you for joining us at this public meeting uh, for the Seaway FuseRap Project remediate public pre-remediation public information session. That was a mouthful. So with us, we have a couple guests tonight that I wanted to highlight. We have both the Department of Health and the DEC. If, if you could, just kind of put your hand up if you're a representative. Thank you. Appreciate that. And, uh, you know, with that note, obviously this is uh, this entire project and the Fuse Rep program as a whole takes a community effort and uh, there is a group effort here amongst the stakeholders in order to deliver a solution to one of these projects. So appreciate everyone being here tonight to help us uh, go ahead and have this conversation. I have a few brief remarks before Rich Whipple, who's sitting here to my right, the other left, uh, who is our project manager for this site is gonna lead us through tonight's discussion. So before we initiate any action here, we wanna share a few details about how the contractors will safely construct and engineer a cap uh, on this portion of the Seaway site. So we have a, uh, I'm sorry, first let me take an opportunity to share this map right here. On this map here you see there's nine fuse wrap sites and really what this communicates is Buffalo is uh, is known as a district and an expert in handling some of these fuse wrap projects. We cover most of the Northeast, uh, and we have, like I said, nine active. In particular, we have four right here in Western New York. And uh, you can see on the, on the map up here, we have not only this site here, we also have the Tonawanda Landfill, the Niagara Falls Storage Site, and then the Gutero Site. And um, those are the ones here in the vicinity of Western New York. With that, I want to get into a couple of notes about our fuse wrap program as a whole. As we clean up these sites, our number one priority is to make these deliver a solution in a safe manner. So our decision making criteria is protecting uh, human health and the environment throughout the duration of the project. We achieve this level of safety by having experts on the team. Uh, Danielle Miles is the technical lead. She's, she's a professional engineer, and here at Seaway team is made up of several engineers and certified scientists who leverage partnerships uh, with our technical lead and our contracting officer representative who I saw him right there, Brian Miner, uh, over there, who's out on the site on a routine basis inter interfacing with our contracting team out there. With that, I wanted to go ahead and turn this over to Rich Whipple, who'll go ahead and lead us through our conversation this evening. And at the conclusion of this, there'll be additional time for a poster session. We have this facility till 9 p.m. this evening. So if you do have some questions that we don't answer during the presentation, uh, as you can see around the room, we have, a, we have a pretty strong presence here from the district this evening. And I'm sure we can uh, either take your question and answer it at a later date if we don't have that answer on hand, but I'm confident we'll be able to answer most. So look forward to talking with you after the presentation. Rich? Thank you, Colonel Milliman. Uh, I want, really want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. Uh, you have valuable time. We respect that and uh, certainly appreciate 
everyone taking some time tonight to join us as we re-engage with the community, uh, our, our key stakeholders and partners, and we gain momentum toward uh, remediation on the Seaway Fuser App site. In a couple of moments, um, I'm just gonna kind of go around the room and point to you all, all, all of our experts um, that are on our project team. I hope that you certainly have had the opportunity to meet several of them um, during the poster session uh, regarding your area of interest. And if not, we're still certainly gonna stick around afterward. Uh, truly a lot of talent uh, around the room and committed to a safe and successful uh, remediation effort on the Seaway site. Uh, with this presentation, we're gonna detail uh, the status of the site, uh, including a very brief history. I know we had a poster back there with the history on it. Uh, we'll describe the remediation method that involves the installation of an engineered cap on areas A, B, and C, uh, describing the safety and air quality measures we will follow during construction, uh, have a brief look at the construction, and describe the future project closeout activities. Uh, if you would prefer to have us answer you by email, we certainly can get your question. Uh, we have an inbox at FuseWrap at uh, usace.army.mil. We have a 1-800 number. I think we have that on one of our posters, and we'll have that at the end graphic, too. Uh, Amy Gaskill here monitors both of those options, and we'll sure to make sure our, uh, a member from our team will get back to you. Our team is certainly represented here tonight. Um, we have a lot of them standing up here. They involve professional engineers, health physicists, chemists, uh, industrial hygienists. We have a lot of experts uh, that are up here. I really value uh, their expertise and um, I'm really happy that, uh, that they're on my team. Um, I'm not gonna call their names, but uh, we, we have a lot of them around the room. Um, with uh, the CERCLA process, we certainly uh, have to respect a very uh, deliberate process. The Comprehensive Environmental Response Compensation and Liability Act, or what we call CERCLA, uh, we're required to follow the remediation at fuse wrap sites. Uh, the fuse wrap program follows the CERCLA process. Uh, formally utilize sites for remedial action program. Sorry about that, I didn't. We have a lot of acronyms and, and I have to, I'm trying to do my best to kind of uh, give you a definition of those. You can see there's a lot of sequential steps in the CERCLA process. All, also, we included dates, uh, some dates on this graphic to show when we conducted each step uh, on the Seaway Fuse Wrap project. Actions at the site were started by the U.S. Department of Energy uh, back in 1993. Uh, through 1998. Um, the DOE completed an investigation of feasibility study and proposed plan in 1993, a long time ago, 30 years ago now. Um, however, they paused work due to community concerns over the proposed remedy at the time, which was to place all of that material from Ashland 1 and 2 and the Lindy sites in the fuse wrap site. I know we have a vicinity map um, back there that kind of illustrates the relationship um, between those sites. Uh, when Congress transferred the fuse wrap program to the Corps of Engineers in 1998, the Buffalo District became responsible for the activities at the site. The Army Corps completed a feasibility study addendum and proposed plan in 2008, 15-ish uh, years ago. These actions were followed by the approval of a record decision in 2009. I think I mentioned that to some of those folks again about 15 years ago. Um, that rod, that record of decision details uh, the remedial action remedy, the in installation of the engineered cap uh, for the site. In 2015, we in initiated excavation and offsite disposal of fuse wrap uh, related soil beyond the landfill leachate collection system on the Seaway North side. This was completed in 2016 with a total of over 1,100 cubic yards of material excavated and shipped off site for disposal. A small site that remains a south side remedial uh, site began in 2016. However, that was not finished due to uh, character characterization of soils in that area. 
Recently, in 2021, we awarded the contract of the areas A, B, and C uh, of the in an installation of the engineering cap, developed construction plans and specifications, and prepared a cost estimate for the en engineering cap, and to also develop an operations and maintenance plan. Recently, in the fall of 2003, last fall, a contract was awarded for the remedial action phase to install that engineered cap, uh, and we will be implementing, implementing that selected remedy uh, this year. Uh, on the one graphic, uh, I think it's, uh, we have that up there, that yellow star, it really indicates where we're at in the CERCLA process, and the remedy involves the construction and installation of that engineered cap over the fuse wrap contaminated materials at the site involving areas A, B, and C, approximately 22 acres we're talking about here. Once that cap is installed over that area, um, we'll be finished with that. We then would focus um, and uh, fi figure out a remedy for that south side area and begin, uh, after that, we'll begin transferring the site back to the Department of Energy for operation and maintenance requirements. Uh, give you a little bit of insight on the site. I know we've looked at, we have this vicinity map here for that purpose. Uh, that fuse wrap site is within the 100 acre um, industrial park here in the town of Tonawanda. You can see on this map, the site's located adjacent to River Road along the Niagara River near interstates I-90 and I-290. Uh, tonight's meeting's location here on the, uh, in the Tonawanda Senior Center is depicted on that map here. I think we have that star uh, that's on that map. You can see the relationship between the two places. Um, uh, we, have, we have other successfully remediated fuse wrap sites are also denoted on this map, and they include Ashland and Lindy. Uh, the Tonawanda landfill uh, location is on this map as well. Landfill operations at the site occurred for more than 60 years now, and the site was operated as a landfill by BFI through the end of 1993. After ceasing those operations a little over 30 years ago, uh, the landfill was capped by BFI in accordance with the New York State DEC uh, regulations. A little bit more on the history here with this graphic. Uh, so we're, we're talking um, you know, over 90 years here of, of, of information, which is, which is pretty cool to, uh, to read and learn from. Um, and we, we had one of those posters there highlighting those activities there too. So we're almost up to about 94 years of history. Um, uh, the site was created when materials uh, containing low levels of residual radioactivity were disposed of on the adjacent government leased Ashland One property. These radioactive residues were the result of activities conducted uh, at the former Lindy site to support the Atomic Energy Commission during World War II. Uh, the material was later relocated to Ashland Oil, uh, by Ashland Oil, to the Seaway site areas A, B, and C that I referred to earlier, and the Ashland Two site. These residues contained radium, thorium, uranium, and uranium daughter products. On the right side of the slide, you can see the recent actions <clears throat> that have occurred in the last 10 to 15 years that I mentioned previously, uh, including the approval of that ROD document. Also, the, remedi the remediation design of areas A, B, and C, the preliminary work that we conducted on the south side area, and completion of the first five-year review plan uh, and recent award of, that, of the construction contract that I mentioned. Uh, a lot of history there. I know that's a lot to take in. I uh, wanted to give you some highlights there, uh, and that was really the point uh, of that. At this time, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Danielle Miles, um, our project engineer and engineering technical lead, and she'll get in, into more details uh, on the construction of the engineering cap. Thanks, Rich. Um, okay, 
Before I get into details about the cap, I want to briefly mention the other areas of the Seaway site. Uh, so this graphic is an older aerial looking at the project site from the northwest. As previously mentioned, you can see those areas A, B, and C on this figure, but there are also three other areas that are part of the landfill, but not part of this upcoming work. These areas include area D, located on the opposite end of the landfill is areas A, B, and C. This was another known area of foosrap related contamination that was not previously capped. This area was remediated under the record of decision for the adjacent Ashland sites in 2000. Uh, Seaway Northside was a small area to the north that was the result of surface runoff from area A. This area was remediated in 2015, as Rich mentioned earlier. And then um, the final area is Seaway Southside, located near Area D on the south end of the landfill. Remedial action has not been completed in this area yet, but we are currently evaluating uh, next steps for that. The upcoming work at the site includes constructing a cap over areas A, B, and C, shown here in the brown. Area A is located in the northernmost section and consists of approximately 12 acres. Most of the foosrap related contamination is near the surface in this area. However, some has been covered with a thin layer of fill or waste up to 10 feet below the ground. And then areas B and C cover approximately seven acres. The majority of the foosrap material in these areas has been covered with a thick layer of soil and waste ranging from a few feet to more than 70 feet. And then there's also a three acre area between areas A, B, and C that will be capped as well. So this is a graphic, uh, and we also have a poster of this. This shows the material that will be used to construct the cap and isolate the contaminated waste beneath. The purpose of this cap is to prevent water from reaching the waste and to limit the releases of gases and liquids to the environment. The bottom layer, which will be placed first and directly on top of the waste, is a 12 inch thick radon attenuation layer. This layer must meet specific standards for soil type, moisture content, and density. And then the next layers consist of a double sided geocomposite venting layer, a geosynthetic clay liner, a geomembrane, and a double sided geocomposite drainage layer. These layers prevent water from infiltrating into the waste materials below and provide an efficient pathway for gases to be collected. Above those uh, geomembrane layers is 30 inches of soil to protect the geocomposite layer and promote surface water drainage away from the cap. And then finally, a six inch layer of topsoil sufficient to allow grass to grow and prevent erosion of the cover. All of these layers must meet specific properties and undergo quality assurance, quality control testing to ensure that the cap is constructed properly. And any soil imported to the site will be sampled to ensure that it is clean before it is actually allowed at the site. So prior to constructing the engineered cap, MCI, the contractor, will begin site activities with mobilization. This will include setting up equipment, offices, and operating supplies at the site. MCI will then install safety measures and stormwater controls, which I'll discuss more specifically uh, in later slides. And then after these initial activities, MCI will begin grading the site to allow proper drainage. Once the site meets the designed elevations for the subgrade, MCI will begin importing clean soil and installing the cap concurrently. So as I mentioned, the cap installation will begin, uh, which will include installing those materials uh, previously shown, and also completing the quality control, quality assurance inspections of all the layers. And then once the cap is installed, the site will be restored by seeding, completing road repairs, and installing permanent stormwater controls, such as ditches for surface water drainage. MCI will then demobilize from the site by disassembling temporary facilities and removing their equipment. Safety is our number one priority. Our goal is to ensure that everyone remains safe throughout this process and that contamination stays on site. To ensure that we meet this goal, some of the safety activities that will be implemented are shown here. All personnel working at the site must have the proper training to work at a FOOSRAP site. 
There will be restricted areas where only those personnel who have proper training, equipment, and knowledge of the site will be allowed. Along with this, site access will be restricted. Uh, the site is currently locked with the fence surrounding it. Daily safety and health inspections will be performed to ensure compliance with safety requirements and proper personal protection equipment or PPE will be assessed daily based on site activities and must be worn by all personnel completing the work. PPE will initially consist of hard hats, hearing protection, steel toe boots, safety glasses, and high-vis vests. And then as the site conditions warrant, additional protection may be needed. So let me take a minute and go into a little detail about the air monitoring protocols. So air will be monitored for radioactive particles and suspended particles or dust during intrusive work at the site, including grading and installation of the radon attenuation layer. These monitors will run continuously when active cleanup work is taking place, and they are analyzed daily to ensure that no contaminated material is leaving the site. The monitors will be placed around the site perimeter, as shown here in the red, to ensure that contaminants aren't going off site. And there will also be monitors placed near the work area and on the workers to ensure that they are protected from any exposures to contamination. Um, if air limits are exceeded, the contractor will suspend work and evaluate the responses necessary. Some actions the contractor might take to reduce the air levels could include wetting the area to limit the amount of dust in the air, reducing the speed of traffic, or stopping work for the day if necessary. Once the radon attenuation layer is in place, the foos wrap material will no longer be exposed at the ground surface. So after that point, the cap construction project resembles many other earthwork projects. Our main priority throughout the work at the Seaway site is to ensure the safety of the community and the contractors working at the site. So this slide just reiterates and goes into some more detail on safety activities, specifically contamination control measures. Prior to leaving the working face or the capping area, trucks and equipment will be decontaminated and screened at the location shown here in the yellow boxes to ensure that no contaminated material leaves the capped area. Personnel will also be screened to verify absence of contamination and they will be decontaminated with soap and water or adhesive tape as necessary. Stormwater controls such as silt fences will be installed to ensure that water and sediment does not go off site. These controls will be inspected weekly at a minimum. I want to emphasize the fact that material is not being removed from the site and only clean material is being added to the legacy fill. So as far as timing goes, MCI has commenced some site preparations, including equipment staging and installing safety measures and stormwater controls in March. MCI will begin grading and start installing the cap beginning in late April, early May, and then temporary seating will be done from September to November of this year to shut down for the winter season, and then topsoil will be placed in the spring of next year with final seating and site restoration starting in August of 2025. Site work is currently expected to end around October 2025, but the contract required completion date is November 2026. So let me turn this back over to Rich uh, to talk about the project closeout dates and the path forward. Thanks, Danielle. Uh, on the project closeout phase, uh, we will determine a path forward on the south side area, create a land use control plan for COA, which will include limiting site use to industrial and annual inspections of the cap initiate a second five-year review uh, beginning next year uh, and document site conditions and evaluate performance of the selected remedy of the injury cap. And uh, finally, con conduct a site closeout uh, once all remedial actions uh, have been completed at the site. We'll also transfer the site records back to the Department of Energy uh, Office of Legacy Management. Now let me turn this back over to Amy Gaskill, uh, who will talk uh, about where you can go for more information. Thank you very much. When you see me, we're almost done. So I just wanted to share with you uh, how you can find out more information and keep in touch on this project and our activities there. 
And uh, we have uh, this QR code. If you use your smartphone and uh, roll over it, you can uh, bring that up on your phone. We also are on social media. Uh, we have our sites listed here and also our website, uh, Seaway uh, Project website. Um, and uh, if you need uh, personal attention, you can reach me on that FoosWrap email address or call the 800 number. I monitor them daily. So, and if I don't have the answer, I will certainly make sure that I find someone who does. So, thank you for joining us tonight. And please, uh, our subject matter experts are here at the posters again to answer any questions that may have arisen during this presentation. And uh, again, we're here until nine o'clock. So, uh, please uh, join us afterward. And thank you all for coming so much. Have a good one. <laughs>